Can raw fabric be sustainable? So you guys know that I typically only use thrifted garments and textiles to make my upcycles, but what are sustainable textiles? All right, so today is the Day Zero Sustainability Conference. So it is a full day of conferences talking about the future of fabrics, sustainable fabrics, and what's going on in that world. And I'm so excited. Like I said, this is combining all of my loves together. So we're going to, I'm going to take you guys behind the scenes into some of the classes. I'm going to take plenty of notes, give you all the tea on whether raw fabric can be sustainable. Let's go. Hi everyone, I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. Today, we are going to investigate whether raw fabric can be sustainable. I already kind of know the answer to this, but I'm looking forward to getting way more information and giving all that information to you so that you can try to make choices that align with what you believe. I'm Steve McCullough, I'm the event director for Functional Fabric Fair, and we really wanted to just have column A meet column B. This convention is for brands and fabric suppliers to meet in the middle, you know, to sell their fabric. But the conference, which I thought was really, really helpful to get both of those groups in one room to inform um, and to teach about sustainability. So these were the levers that we mapped out in the report. Um, and I kind of just hit upon these six things. So I'll just kind of quickly tick through them. Some amazing uh, speakers, very educated on the topics, been working in the field of sustainability for a really long time. You know, stating the facts, like where we are as far as sustainability, how much we are polluting. You know, the fabric industry, the textile industry is not the biggest polluter. There's the other other really big, big impact. So the land clearing, uh, the uh, conversion of wetlands to agriculture, fossil fuel based fertilizers and pesticides and all the other impacts that go into that. Um, the cattle raising, those, uh, those are the, the big buckets. One thing I learned is that one of the biggest contributors to non-sustainability, the bad habits, is in the manufacturing process. So 98% of the impacts are really in that, in that, that supply chain. We talk about end of life a lot, but that's really, when you're talking about carbon, it's like less than a percentage. And it's the same with water or other environmental impact areas. In fact, some of the materials like cotton and, and natural materials have some of the biggest impacts from water and carbon and toxicity. But we all have to do our part. Like we all have to do our part if we're going to stay on this planet. That was a high level, but um, just some things to think about when we talk about circularity, the principles of design out waste and pollution, keep products and materials in use at their highest value, regenerate natural capital, and ensure a just and equitable transition. All right, so we just finished like the first quarter of the class, the day zero behind the scenes. And it's really exciting because we're coming from the perspective more of the industry perspective. So you're talking about all of your brands, where they're sourcing their materials and making sure that they understand that just because you think that your materials are coming from one place, that material might have been outsourced from another place. And you have to be careful about really are you sustainable? Oh, and then also the other things that I found out about some of our natural fibers, like cotton, um, if it's not organic cotton, a lot of times it can have pesticides or any of these fabrics, like your, your cotton, your silks, your wool, it can have things on top of it, um, treating it. It can have things that were used when making the natural fiber. You can learn about uh, things through like responsible wool standard and getting getting wool through that, the responsible down standard um, or um, leather that comes from better sources. So there are all these great solutions and their suppliers and now it's e much easier to connect these days. So you have, you have those solutions. Or it could have been grown in a place that like for cotton, it's very, it needs a lot of water to grow. So it could have, have been grown in a place that completely depleted the water source in a place where they couldn't really afford to have that happen. So I'm excited to see some of the brands that are here to just know that even though people, people aren't necessarily going to change overnight and there are definitely people pushing, pushing hard 
for uh, brands to become more sustainable. And that's all we really can expect. They are motivated, one, by money, but they're also motivated by legislation. They're motivated by what we think as the consumers. So consumer habits, what people are talking about, you know, if you're talking bad about the company, you know, holding them accountable, then it's it's working because those companies were in the room. More legislation is coming out to hold the companies accountable, the factories as well as the companies, the brands. However, it doesn't allow them to say that their products are sustainable. And that's a good thing and a bad thing. The reason they can't do it is because there was too much greenwashing. Greenwashing is basically when a company says that they're green or sustainable and they're not. Um, it's a blanket statement. And because it's such a blanket statement, the government does not want people using that term because it gives the illusion, it could give the illusion of something that's not. So like, say for instance, the, the product is 10% recyclable, you know, like big woo, you know? So they don't want people using those terms. The reason that's bad for you is because how do you know? Then how do you know what companies are making an effort to become more sustainable? In that case, since they can't say that they're green or sustainable, you have to be really educated on the terminology. And most people are not. Most people in general, even if they like sustainability, they're not educated in the terms to use um, or the terms that people would use in order to say that we're sustainable. But it is encouraging that a lot of companies are really trying to be more sustainable. Definitely, let's keep pushing our brands to become more sustainable because this is the reason why they're here. So I met some really cool people. I met Julian, he's from TikTok. Guys, look who I ran into. What's up? <laughs> so what did you think about the first half? I thought it was it was a really insightful, I think, honestly. I think the, yeah. one of the coolest things I think I saw was the fact that um, the supply chain type of thing where they had a lot of, like, the converter part. Yeah. Where it's, like, kind of hard. Even if you think you know your supplier, it could be, yeah. like, obfuscated. Yeah. Know, like so, that. like, you're claiming that everything is yeah. sustainable. Like, and you really don't know. So yeah. it's kind of, you know, really important to really ask, like, where your stuff is coming from. So yeah, that's that was true. Fun. Um, we connected because he told me he, you know, watched me upcycle and now he's he's an amazing upcycler. I uh, love, love, love his style. Let us know what you're wearing. Okay, so the pants, I've made the pants. Of course. Actually, one of, one of the videos I made, I, I showed this off. This is one of the jackets I made. One of the first things, one of the first pieces I ever made, uh, and I still wear it all the time. And then just the, you know, a thrift, everything's thrifted, of course. Yeah, you know, of all upcycling. And the hat. You gotta get, like, I gotta get the Sasha go. It's stitching. It's stitching is kind of cool, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, I am ready for day two of Functional Fabric Fair. This is the first day of the convention. I'm so excited to see what vendors are there, what types of fabric, uh, sustainable fabrics, what they're doing in sustainable fabric technology, what that means, um, what you should look for when you are buying garments if you're not gonna upcycle. So yes, I'm ready to get all of the answers. Today I have on fully upcycled fit. I have on my black and white, what is this? Poet sleeve, puffy sleeve, three tier puffy sleeve blouse, and my harness, as well as the embroidered jeans that we sell on Blue Prick Signature. You can see all of the things that you might be looking for and then you can scan the code and order samples directly like while you're here. So if you see something you like, you can order samples. It'll go back to your office or your house, wherever you want. So we have accessories and trims here. Z -z -z Zippers, one of my favorite things. Oh, tags, labels. That's really cool, labels and patches. And this is something I really need to be thinking about because even though we're an upcycle brand, I have to be conscious of where I am ordering my labels from, where I'm ordering, oh, you know, these other things from because then it, you know, I might be contributing to 
the problem. So we want to make sure that from beginning to end, we're keeping everything as sustainable as possible. So this is function uh, based fashion. You guys know I love texture. I love texture. Pants and tights and lightweight and shirts. Ooh. I wish you guys could feel this. There's a lot of stretchy fabric here. We use the ketonic poly and the regular polyester okay. to create two tone colors. If you want this effect, you must take uh, two contrast colors to okay. make this. So we also have the other, the other color combo. The one rule have to follow is we need to use the bright color and the dark color to okay. make the contrast, but contrast effect. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And we also have the biodegradable polyester. Oh wow! Yeah. We are on our way to the outdoor recreation archives. So this kind of charts one product and its transformation. That's the LL Bean Field Coat. You can see the history of this coat. Very famous coat. I see these in the thrift store quite a bit actually. Which actually is a great testament to the coat that it lasts. Let's see, we have the Columbia Bugaboo Parker. This one. Uh, I've had this one before, actually. I think I've thrifted this one before. And then we also have the North Face. And then the North Face Fleece. This is a functional fabric fair, which means to me, um, these are active wear brands. So anything active wear, camping, swimming, running, uh, some lifestyle streetwear, uh, different things like that. A lot of stretchy material, a lot of wool, a lot of canvas, different things like that. Polygen Group, we provide finished uh, technologies for products that can last and have a longer durability by keeping products fresh and clean okay. for an odor control performance. Oh, wow. Uh, so in that sense, by keeping products fresh, you know, you can extend the life of them, uh, keep them out of landfill, we're more wash less. Um, and this is a, a sustainability story that a lot of over 400 brands that we work with already you can see as a, a huge add value um, for the extension of products. So this story shows just what the value of skipping one wash over. Okay. Um, so if you can keep a product out of the laundry just one out of two times, you're having a major environmental impact. And I love seeing the accessories, the buckles and straps and everything like that. These small moments on garments really add up to yeah. make what you're producing special so they shouldn't be an afterthought. Exactly. And we help you put all of that thought into it um, so that you have the product that you're proud of and people are proud to show their friends. So this is a jeans button, actually. So when you're talking about not necessarily upcycling, but recycling, yes. sustainability, okay. it's very easy to remove because one of the hardest things to do, is. right, that's why we have such a challenge with um, recycling apparel in particular. And this is an opportunity to help that. Okay. So yeah, so it just screws. Removable ones. Well, we do. <laughs> so yeah, it just awesome. screws on so you can easily take it off the garment and then you can take the fabric and start right. to yeah, oh, I love deconstruct that. it. Yes. Yeah. I love so, that. Yeah. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing. I typically do upcycles. I take old clothes and I remake them into new clothes. And I also have an upcycle clothing brand, which I am currently wearing. And it just started last year. And we are super excited to grow and to become a change maker in the sustainable fashion industry and to be a change maker within the DIY community so that we teach you how to remake your clothes to be just as unique as you are. So definitely hit that subscribe button and we have a amazing things coming up. You don't want to miss it. All right, back to the video. I'm wondering, is there a fashion fabric fair for sustainable fabrics? Because um, I didn't really see too much luxury or like 
stuff for dresses. I did see like lingerie. That was really cool. What do you have here? We have stretch lace. Stretch, everything is actually polyamide, athletic fabrics, four-way stretches, as well as actually swimwear, printables. Wow. We have a lot of actual lingerie, intimate wear, actual locker collections. Okay. That's what we do. Okay. Um, talked to a ton of people and found out what they are doing to make their fabrics more sustainable. There was a lot, a lot of uh, recycled polyester. Okay, so we have several different technology for polyester recycle. Okay. Okay, so we can recycle from the air, from the sea, and from the land. Okay. A few different ways. So this is recycled from the land. We can recycle the waste, textile waste gas. Okay. The basically the bottle. Okay. So just like this, this is the waste fabric. Okay. So we can recycle it and turn it to reproduce to the recycled chips. So it's okay. And then what would people be able to use the chips for? Um, for the filament. For the filament. Yarn. Okay. And, and uh, spinning mm -hmm. into yarn and spun yarn. Oh, okay. And turn it to the fabric. There's some research to be done to see, you know, really what that means as far as the long-term sustainability of the garment. You can go to the sustainability lounge. You want to tell me about your brand? So it's, uh, yeah, so we collect about 98, 99% of all last night wool. Uh, Partners own the company. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so... So you know exactly where the wool comes yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you get it from? Uh, we work with textile recyclers. Okay. Um, we have two facilities, one in Europe and one in Asia. Okay. Uh, but we work with textile recyclers that are collect tons of material. Okay. We receive down comforters, jackets, etc. What we do is uh, we'll take comforters that are made from 100% cotton. We'll chop up the fabric uh, after the down's been extracted. Uh, we'll donate it to another company that makes non-woven insulation. Nice. So to make sure that the fabric isn't going to landfill as well. Uh, the broken feathers uh, that cannot be resold gets actually converted into organic fertilizer. Nice. And of course, the down of feathers are what we sell to the brands, okay. etc. So uh, we really try to. Our, our whole goal is, as you can see, zero waste. Yes. Uh, so in the whole process. Yes. Yeah. This is a digital tag solution. Okay. By Climate. Why don't we do an example for you? Sure. So we show you here. We go down here. And basically, the brand will plug in all this information, traceability, Got it. to get all your sustainable details and information, as well as authenticity purposes. Got it. So, so this brands can use this in order to make sure that's transparency. Exactly. Okay. It's giving the brands. It's basically a digital tag. Got it. So, in this area, you're going to find a lot of the products that are being used in sustainable footwear. So some of the trending um, products that are coming out now for footwear. One of my favorite things, especially sneakers. Is it gonna be your inners and your linings? Just make some walnuts. All right, it is day three of the conference and I'm on my way back um, to the convention center. And the question of the day is, you know, with everything that's going on in sustainability, what should you as the consumer be looking for if you are choosing to buy retail? We're here with Jill and she's going to answer a few questions that I know that you guys want to know. So the question was posed, how do you best buy a garment? in this confusing apparel world? And the answer is not quite so simple, but there are quite a few different labels that are now being put onto garments, depending what you want to, what your values are. How do you shop to your values? So if you were to start at the very beginning around chemical manufacturing and some of those things, you'll see some garments that will have a blue sign tag on it or an Ocotex 100 tag on it or different things that differentiate. And so if you look a little deeper, those are going to talk about the chemical management that was um, controlled while that garment was being made. And then there's also certifications you can look for around recycling, a global recycling standard, CGRS, I believe that is out there now and consumer facing. 
But I would say the most important thing too is ask your brands, the brands you buy from, send them an email, ask about what they're doing and ask them to provide it to you. And I said that for two reasons. One, it will encourage them to keep going further in it. Yes. And two, there's kind of become this thing called green hushing, mm. which has been a response to the, the attacks of greenwashing. Ah. And so as brands have been accused of greenwashing, they're now kind of retracting into green hushing, okay. even if they're doing good things. Right. So we need to encourage them to speak okay. out and talk about it. Of course, we know that number one, keep thrifting, keep upcycling, keep recycling, doing the things in your personal life that you have already established to do, you know, adding to them little by little. Do you think in the future there will be some type of overarching council that will be able to certify an individual garment or a line of garments? Um, I'm hopeful, but I will also <laughs> say the industry's probably been working on it for about 20 years. Yeah. And it's so complicated. It is. It like is. buildings, like lead, yeah. like those things. Um, yeah. But there are a lot of good efforts underway to get there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm super ready. encouried to have met you and people who have been working in this industry for a really long time to push it forward because yeah. it wouldn't be as far as it is without you. Absolutely. It, Absolutely. it just would. It yeah. just wouldn't. So um, that encourages me. Good. You know, to, to know that we're we're on the right track. We're getting there <laughs> step by step. Yes. 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 Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank and the reason why this is important is because it'll provide almost like a stamp of approval that includes levels to let you know how sustainable is something. It's something that's already established, well established in the architectural community and the building community. It's called the United States Green Building Council. They have a LEED certification that they produce and you can be LEED silver, LEED gold, LEED platinum. And there's a plaque on the outside of the building to let the end user know that that building is quote unquote green and at what level it is so the final question can raw fabric be sustainable and i know this is a question that's not only for when we're buying retail but also if you're a sewist and you want to source sustainable fabrics the the answer to the question is yes raw fabric can be sustainable However, the question, the real true question is how sustainable is it? And that's what we really need to focus on because in our lives, I don't want us to be thinking like, oh, I'm sustainable and I'm not sustainable. We all are on a journey. There is a journey. You're, there's levels of sustainability and we want to go from wherever we are right now and slowly go, go towards the goal of being more sustainable each and every day. So as far as your fabrics, you want to... Like I said, natural fibers, of course, 100% cotton, 100% silk, yes. But also, what are they putting on top of that? So first of all, yes, source those natural fibers. If you can, get them from a ethical source. If it's organic, then you know it wasn't grown someplace where they're depleting the water source. Jill talked about some of those certifications that you can look for that'll tell you whether those things are happening. And then also you want to ask yourself, I ran into, you guys saw it, I ran into a lot of discussion about recycled polyesters. I mean, that was a big, big, big deal here. Um, everybody is recycling polyester, which we kind of have to, like we have to start recycling polyester because there's so much polyester in the world. Like we have to recycle it. it it's just the bottom line. We put too much of it out there. We have to start uh, recycling it, upcycling it, doing something with it because it is not going anywhere. So the question becomes, as we are producing new materials and raw materials, do in the future, do we want these things to last forever or do we want them to be biodegradable? When you think about biodegradable, you are manufacturing something for the end of its life. And I get that except now you're making things that are meant to be thrown away. And the fact is, is that they're eventually maybe going to be thrown away anyway, so that is a responsible thing to do. But then on the other end, a lot of people say, oh, we should manufacture so it lasts forever so that it never has to get thrown away. Um, so <laughs> that's, the other, that's the other side of it. You can decide which side you, you are on. 
But I know as far as the manufacturers, I think that, you know, they're really trying to come up with ways to like, for instance, if a specific product, if it's biodegradable, you want the whole product to be biodegradable, not just portions of it. Um, so yeah, that, that part is rough, but look for materials that have recycled polyester in them. Um, because especially in the functional fabric space, when you're talking about your streetwear, when you're talking about your uh, garments that are going to be used for sports and activities, swimming, lingerie, um, polyesters are a big thing. Anything that has stretch content, stretch material in it, it's a big deal. So we want to start looking for those recycled um, polyesters in those materials. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Definitely put some questions in the comments and um, I'll see if I can get some of the experts to jump in the comments and answer some of these questions. Um, and then I can also do some personal, more personal research to answer your questions in the comments. Let's keep this dialogue going so that we can definitely get to where we need to be in the industry. And I also went to some dead stock fabric places. You don't wanna miss that, that's the next video. And we have some very exciting things coming up. Definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing. All right, I'll see you in the next one, bye.